Okay, so we're back today. Welcome, welcome. Uh, today we're going to hit a topic of computer science called binary numbers. And I know this isn't uh, directly related to Python, although we will be showing you how to convert between binary and decimal uh, in Python as well. So let's begin with number theory. This is basically turning into a little bit of a math course for this lesson. And let's start with uh, the decimal system. The decimal system goes from 0 all the way up to 9. The decimal system means that there are 10 possible numbers starting from 0 going to 9. All other numbers in the decimal system are created using those 10 digits. And if you're wondering why we chose that, it's because we have 10 digits on our fingers. Um, and so the interesting part here, right, is that when you get to 9, the next number after 9 is 10. We all know that, and we don't really think about it much. So computers don't work on the decimal system. They work on something called the binary system. And the reason for this is because in binary, you only have two possible digits. As, as, well, let's put the zero first. A zero and a one. Uh, why is this? Well, the answer to it is quite straightforward, actually. It's because computers really only understand two numbers. And this one, the zero, representing electricity off, because that's what, that's what computers run on. They run on electricity. And this number as electricity on. So essentially, a computer is able to generate these digits, these binary numbers. Okay, And in computer science, by the way, uh, these are called uh, these are called bits. And um, if you're wondering what uh, a byte is, a byte is actually eight of these guys. So a byte equals uh, eight bits. So essentially, a byte, if you have eight of these guys, now we want to start asking ourselves, hmm, how many can we represent? How many, how many things can represent? So let's, let's write down the number of bits, or the number of binary numbers. One bit. In other words, let's just say you had a one or a zero. How many things can that represent? Well, you can only have a one or a zero, so it can only represent two states. OK? And what if you had two bits now? So let me. Let me actually draw this for you. 0, 1, or actually let's start from 0, 0. There's 0, 0, 0, 1. Now can you think of the other possible um, combinations of two bits? Obviously one has to be this, and the other one has to be this. There are no other possibilities now. So this is with, the, oops, this is with, um, Sorry, I didn't mean to write that x there. Not sure why that happened. OK. Um, so that means that two bits can represent four states. OK? Um, now, if we write this down in terms of 1 is equal to 2, 2 equals 4, and now let's do this last one now. Okay, ready? So let's go 3 bits. 0, 0, 0. Think about, think about what the next number would be if you had 0, 0, 0. 0, 0. Obviously, it has to change, right? 1. And then 0, 1, 0 and then 0, 1, 1, and then 1, 0, 0. See if you can detect the pattern here. And then 1, 0, 1, and then 
uh, 1, 1, 0, and then 1, uh, 1, 1. Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That means 3 bits can represent 8 states. Okay, so if we go back here, th there's a pattern to this. I'm wondering if you guys can recognize the pattern, why I drew them in this way. Okay, so that means now if we go like this, 3 equals 8. Can you think of any type of mathematical uh, operation that you can do to these numbers that will provide you with these numbers? I'll pause the video now and see if you can think of it. So a mathematical operation. So obviously, uh, multiplying by 2 is not going to work, right? So 1 times 2 is 2. Yeah, that's true. Uh, 2 times 2 is 4. That works, too. But 3 times 2 is 6. That doesn't work. So multiplying by 2 uh, is close, but no, it doesn't, it doesn't work. There is another type of a mathematical operation, though, that will work. Pause the video now, and not for long, just for a few seconds, and Try to think of what you could do mathematically to the left-hand side to equal the right-hand side. Okay, so I uh, hope you figured it out. If you didn't, that's okay. But the answer is, basically, if you use this number as the exponent of the base 2. So if you go like that. So in other words, 2 to the power of 1 is 2. 2 to the power of 2 is 4. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. Okay? Now, it, let's go back here and let's take a look at these numbers here. I put these numbers in order. So this number is actually, now let's write like the decimal equivalent here. This number, 0, 0, 0, is decimal 0. This is a 1 this is a 2, this is a 3, this is a 4, this is a 5, this is a 6, and this is a 7. And those are the 8 states, or the 8 numbers that 3 bits can represent. Now let's take a look at these. And there's another pattern which we need to discover here. Take a look at the number 1 here. Obviously, like this one right here. So this rightmost bit that's turned on here, that must be the number 1, okay? Because it's equal to a 1. And the way this works, I'll show you, it's actually really, really simple. This one is a 2, so this, this second location from the right represents a 2. But now we don't know about the 3 because the 3, it's not just one uh, bit that's representing it. There seems to be two of these ones here. But I think if, you're, if you can kind of think of it in your head, a 3 is equal to 2 plus 1. So there is the 3. Now the question is, how does the 4 come about? And the rule to figure this out is actually really, really, really simple. Let's actually just write down three blank numbers. And let's say that the first one is equal to 2 to the power of... Now, here's the interesting part. Let's go, let's actually erase this first. And um, I want you to take a look, at th just think of this in terms of uh, positions. This is position 0, this is position 1, this is position 2. So if we're counting going this way, starting from 0, OK, great. These are now the exponents. Then, the next thing which we need to do in order to get that number is we need to raise, um, we need to go the base of 2 to the power of the location. So think of this index, think of this 0, 1, 2 as the location of the, of the position of the numbers. And now you have to raise each one to the power of 
its location and then you have to add them. So now let's actually put this in. Let's actually write down the numbers for it. 2 to the power of 0 is 1. 2 to the power of 1 is 2. 2 to the power of 2 is 4. And what's the what would be the next one? 2 to the power of 3 is 8. The next one, 2 to the power of 4 is 16. Now, I want you to look at this column here. Okay? That means each of the digits in the binary number is represented by these decimal values. So, for example, if I had the number uh, 0, 1, uh, 0, 1, 1, now, you see, what I do is I say, please go away. Okay. Um, let me just go like that so now you can see it. So now what I say for this location, I say it's 0 times 2 to the power of 4 plus 1 times, because here is the 1. See the 1 right there? That's where this, that's where this thing is coming from. So that's, that number goes right there. Now it's 1 times 2 to the power of 3 plus 0 times 2 to the power of 2 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 1 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 0. Well, I think you, know, you, you understand mathematics well enough that if you multiply 0 by anything, it doesn't matter what it is. It's still going to be 0. So really, the only ones you need to add to get your total to convert it is the ones that have a 1 in the location. So there's a 1 here, there's a 1 here, and there's a 1 there. So therefore, the answer is 8 plus 2 plus 1, which is 11. Now, this number just happens to be 1, 1, but this is a decimal number. Okay, so decimal 11. That means, oops, uh, let's erase that for a second. Uh, one zero. Now we can put the zero in front too. That doesn't that doesn't change anything. But one zero one one is equal to. So this is binary. It would equal eleven as a decimal. Okay. So let's um. Let's try a different number. Notice now. Notice now, if you kind of understand this and you go back to this graphic here where I wrote all the numbers down, right? Just remember, okay, starting from the left hand side, let's just go one, two, three here, right? Because there's only three there's only three digits in this three bit system. Let's go uh, the first one represents one, the next one represents two. You're doubling it every time, right? The successive digit to the left always doubles in value. So that means this one is equal to a 4. Okay? So, uh, obviously this is 0 because there's no 1s. Here is a 1 in the 1 spot. Yep. Here is a 1 in the 2 spot. Now the 3 is a 2 plus a 1. The 4 well, we have a 1 in the 4 spot here, but nothing for the 2 and the 1 here. Okay, And then the 5 is a 4 plus a 1. The 6 is a 4 plus a 2. And the 7 is a 4 plus 2 plus 1. See how that works? So therefore, now that you kind of uh, understand how that should work. How about I give you a number now and you try and convert it? Okay, so what would this number be? 111001. 
pause the video now and give it a shot. Try and figure out what that number is equal to in decimal. Okay? Okay, so let's try it here. So this represents the one location. This is two, four, eight, sixteen, and then doubling sixteen would give me thirty-two. So I have to go 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 1. And that should give me, when I add them up, it should give me uh, 57. So hope you got that's so that binary number is equal to uh, 57 in the decimal. OK? Okay, let's try another number. Let's try 1111. Give that a shot. Try converting that into a, a decimal. Pause the video. Okay, so let's let's do this one. Let's see if we can figure it out. So this is a 1, this is a 2, this is a 4, and this is a 16. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry. And this is an 8. So if we add them up, right, we're going to get 8 plus 4, that's 12, plus 3, that's 15. Oops. And then a 3, and then we're going to get, well, 3 is like 2 plus 1, that's 15. Now, why did I pick this one? Well, because if you think about it now, if we have a... Four, if we have four bits in total and they're all ones, what's the biggest number we can have? It's 2 to the power of 4. And 2 to the power of 4 is equal to 16. And you might say, okay, well, doesn't that mean that the biggest number should be 16? No, that's not what it means. It means that there are 16 possible numbers that could be represented by four bits. The question is then, is why is the biggest number 15? And the answer is because we're starting at 0. You see, 0 to 15 is 16 numbers. So therefore, if you, in other words, another little mathematical trick is if you ever want, gosh, this thing keeps popping up. If you ever kind of want to, um, figure out what the biggest number you can represent with the number of bits. It's all ones, but the answer is if the number of bits, let's say, is let's say it's eight. So if you had eight bits in total, it'd be two to the power of eight minus one, right? Because two to the power of four minus one is equal to fifteen. And so therefore, 2 to the power of 8 is 256 minus 1 is equal to 255. That means if I had the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, that number is equal to 255 in decimal. And I can even prove it to you. Watch. If you start up a calculator, uh, I think I have one here, without even uh, K, yeah, I think it's called KCalc. There it is. So now, if I was to come here and go settings, let's go numerical system mode, and then if I was to go to binary, and I was to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and change that to decimal, I get 255. Okay? So that's kind of a cool trick that you can kind of figure out what's the maximum number you can have if you have all ones. So now that you've understood, hopefully, how to convert uh, from binary to decimal, Let's do the opposite way around. Let's figure out how to convert from decimal to binary. 
This is a little bit more tricky, but it's not bad. So decimal to binary. Let's pick a decimal number. Let's pick an easy one to start out with. How about the number five? So the way we're going to do this, let me just write down some. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to need more than three bits to do this. And let me write down the, the number in terms of their decimal values. So this is a one, a two, and a four. Can you see a combination that will, actually let's do one more. Okay, let's do an eight. All right, can you see a combination that would add up to five? Obviously, it's pretty easy to do, right? But I want to, I want to give you a more uh, generic kind of an algorithm or recipe to do this. What you do is you look at the five and you go start from the right hand side here or no actually you would start from the left hand side and you would find the biggest number that fits into five so the eight's too big and anything above eight would also be too big to fit into the five but the four will fit into the five so we'll say okay let's put a one in the place of the four now how, many, how much do we have left? Well, if we go 5 minus 4, we've only got 1 left. And so therefore, the 2 is too big. So let's put a 0 there. And the 1 fits perfectly. And so that's your answer. 1, 0, 1 is equal to 5. OK, so we, went, we figured out what the decimal equivalent. So we figured out what the binary number of 5 is. Let's try another one. Uh, how about the number uh, 26? Okay, so we'll just go like um, 1, 2, 4. I keep doubling the number every time. 8, 16, uh, 32. I can stop now because I know that 32 is too big. Okay. So it's, it's not going to be 32. But 16 does go into 6. So therefore, in this 16 spot, I'm going to put a 1. Then I'm going to say 26 minus 16, because that's, those are the only numbers I have left to represent, because I've already represented 16 of them. Well, that's going to equal 10. So then I say to myself, OK, go to the next number. Does 8 fit into 10? It does. So I'll say, OK. Give me an 8. Now I'll say 10 minus 8. That's just going to leave me with 2. Now the, the 4 is too big now, so I'm going to put a 0 here. I think you can see what the rest is, right? If I put a 1 here for the 2, that fits perfectly, and I'm done. That means that I don't need the 1 here, so I'm going to put a 0 in. And so 26 would be 11010. Zero, one, zero. And just to check, if I went uh, 26 in binary, and there it is, uh, 1, 1, uh, let's put it here, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. OK? So now I want to give you guys to try one. Uh, how about you try try to convert the number uh, how about 45? Uh, Can you change the number 45 from go from decimal to binary? Pause the video now and give it a shot. Okay, so let's try this. We're on the number 45, OK? So I'm going to start from 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and the next biggest one is 64. I just keep doubling. Now I can stop here because I know 64 is too big, so I don't want that one. But I do want 32. So I'm going to put a 1 here for the 32. And I'm going to say, OK, now if I take away this, I'm going to end up with a 3 here, 
and a 1. So 2 from 5 is 3, and 3 from 4 is 13. Whoa. It's 13. Therefore, 16 is too big. Put a 0 here. 8 goes into 16. Uh, sorry, 8 goes into 13. So that's good. Okay. And that's going to leave me with a 5. So I'm going to take the 8. Now, 4 goes into 5. That's good. So I'll take the 4, and I'll put a 4 here, and I'll subtract, and I'm left with a 1. That means I don't want the 2, because it's too big, but I'll take the 1. There's my number. Let's see if I'm right. Uh, the number was 45. Let's try it. So let's go decimal 45 in binary. And the answer is correct, 101101. Woohoo! All right, you guys now know how to convert between binary to decimal. That's what we did first, right? We did, you know, like we did 101, that's 4 plus 1, that's a 5. So we went from, initially we went binary to decimal. And then now, we went from like something like, uh, you know, what would the number uh, 7 be as a binary? And that would be 111, going from decimal to binary. So we've done both, right? 4 plus 2 plus 1. Um, now what I want to do is let's do a little bit of arithmetic. So let's do now, let's do adding. Okay? So let's take the number. Uh, so now, th now that we know how to both convert both ways, let's do a little bit of math with them. Let's take something easy. How about the number um, 4 plus 6? Okay? What is the number 4 plus 6? Well, this is a decimal addi addition, and we know the answer is 6 plus 4 is 10. Let's do, it in, let's do it in a binary format. So what's the number 6 as a binary number? Well, it's 4 plus 2. So that's 4 plus 2. That's 6. And what's 4? Four? 4 is 1, 0, 0. Now let's add them. Now here's what you need to know when you add numbers. It's really easy actually adding binary numbers because here are the possibilities. 0 plus 0 is equal to 0. 1 plus 0 is equal to 1. And that also goes for 0 plus 1. That's also equal to 1, right? Uh, but what's 1 plus 1? Well, now you can't write 2. What is, how do you write 2 in uh, binary? The number 2 in binary is equal to 1, 0, right? Oh, by the way, there's a joke. Uh, I, I, can't, I cannot continue with this lesson without telling you the joke. You can buy this. There's a t-shirt that says, there are 10 types of people in the world. Those who understand binary and those who don't. You get it? There are 10 types of people in the world, those who understand binary and those who don't. Well, you can actually buy a t-shirt that says that, and it's pretty cool. And it confuses the hell out of people who don't know what binary is. But people who've studied binary know that this is not a 10. It's a 2, right? So that's a cool joke. I, I had to put that up here. So 
Um, let's go back here to the, uh, the number 2. So that's a 10, right? Or Sorry, let me say that again. The number 2 is a 1, 0. So how would I represent that? So if I come here, here's how I would represent that. I would say digits 1 plus 1 is equal to a 2, which is represented as a 0. And then I carry the 1 to the next column. And if there's nothing here, then the 1 comes down. So this is 1 plus 1. However, you can run into situations where, let's say, for example, we wanted to, oh, jeez, this thing's really annoying me. Like my finger keeps hitting that button. Um, what if we had, let's say, what if we had 1, 1, which is, what's 1, 1? That's a 3, right? And let's say we add another 1, 1. So that's also a 3, right? So we know that 3 plus 3 is 6 in decimal. But now let's do it in binary. Ready? Watch this. 1 plus 1 is 2. So we put the 0 down and we carry the 1. Now look what happens. Now we get 1 plus 1 plus 1. And this is the maximum situation. So the maximum situation is a 3. And how do we represent a 3? 3 is equal to 1, 1. So therefore, we put the 1 down, and then we carry the next 1 over. And that comes down in the next column. And so therefore, this is 6, which makes sense, because that's 4 plus 2, right? So now you guys understand how to add. So that means, let's go back to the 6 plus 4. 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus uh, 0 is a 1. And a 1 plus 1 is a 2, which is a 0. And then you carry the 1, and then you put the 1 here. So what's that number? Well, that's the locations that are significant here are the 2 and the, so that's 1, 2, 4, and 8. And 8 plus 2 is equal to 10. Correct. That's what we wanted. OK? So now that you've seen how to add, uh, can you do an addition? How about I, I'd like you to add the numbers, uh, add the numbers, let's say, uh, 13 plus uh, 23. So add those up, but doing, but using binary. Pause the video now and give it a shot. All right, let's let's try it out. 13. Let's go 1 2 3 4. So we got 1 2 uh, 4 8. So we'll put in a 1 for the 8 and a 1 for the 4. That gives me 12 and that gives me 13. Now for the 23, I'm going to need a little bit more. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I think that should be enough. So for, once again, this one, uh, oops, no, let's put it below. One, two, four, eight, sixteen. So let's go sixteen. So from twenty-three, because, oh yeah, no, that's a four. Yeah, that's right. So 4, take away, and then we're left with 3. And then, so that's a 1 and a 1. I've already put a 1 there. OK, so there's a 1 there, too, I forgot. So just to double check, uh, I went uh, for 23, decimal, and we'll go binary. Yeah, that's right. OK, so now. We'll add these guys. So we'll go 1, 0. We'll do the 23 on the bottom. 1, 1, 1. And then 1, 1, 0, 1. Now we can put a 0 here. That doesn't change anything. Putting a 0 in front of the 13 doesn't change anything. So now we'll go like that. And we'll add them up. 1 plus 1 is 2. Carry the 1. 
put the one there. One plus one is two, carry the one. One plus one plus one is three, there's a one, carry the one. One plus one is two, put the zero, carry the one, and then one plus one is two, put the zero, carry the one, and then finally put the one down. And so now, when we add this up decimal-wise, we're going to get 6 and 3. So is this equal to 36? Well, let's see here. Uh, this is going to be location 32 plus location 4. And indeed, it does equal 36. We are correct. OK? Okay, great. So um, before I continue with the next uh, part of this lesson, I wanted to show you, you can actually do converting from decimal to binary and binary to decimal in Python. So let's say, for example, I have uh, a number that I want to, con so if, let's say I go uh, change the binary number, uh, I think it's, Seven is it? Was it like this? Yeah, there you go. So if I want the the decimal changed to a binary, there it is. It puts a zero B in front to represent the fact that it's a binary. But you notice it's returning a string. Okay. And the other way, if I want to go the other way, is I can go int, and then I can say, and this also has to be now a string. But I don't have to put zero B in front of it. Although I could, I could, oops, I could put zero B in front of it. But if I go one one one, and now change that into an integer, uh, provided that that number is a base two number, and it gives me seven. Now you don't have to put the zero B in front. I can go like that, and it's still going to give me the number. So converting between decimal and binary um, you can do it like this and you know if I try to let's say let's go for the 36 there right uh, if I went bin 36 and there it is on the right hand side you can see there and once again if I wanted to go back the other way I'd say uh, change one zero zero one zero zero in, and it's uh, base 2, right? So it, change it into an integer from base 2, and that would give me 36. So you can actually write programs to achieve both of these, um, but we're not going to do that today. I'll just, I'm just going to show you the built-in way that Python can do this. Uh, however, the last thing we're going to do today is I'd like to be able to We've done adding, and now the question is, how do you do subtracting? How do you subtract? Well, the answer to that is that um, you actually don't subtract. The way you subtract is you add negative numbers. So in other words, let's say, for example, I had something like 7 take away 4. Well, I know the answer is 3, but that's not the way you do it. The way you do this is you go 7 plus negative 4, and that's equal to 3. So in, in essence, we're still adding, but we're adding the negative of the number. So that's how you subtract. The question now is, how do you represent a negative number? Because so far in our number system that we've decided upon, there are no negative numbers. So here's where the world, the wonderful world of two's complement comes in. Okay, and in order to understand two's complement, what we need to understand is that there are uh, two types of number systems. There are signed number systems and unsigned. So an unsigned number system means that you cannot, okay, so you, you cannot have a negative, no negatives. OK, 
Okay, so in an unsigned system, everything's positive. That's the one we've been doing up till now. Okay, but with a signed system, you can have there are negatives. So how do you do this? Well, we go back to our basic premise here of how many numbers can you represent? So let's say again, let's say we start with, uh, oops, hold on a second. Okay, so let's start with the uh, three bit system we did before, okay? So with the three bit system, we can represent two to the three power numbers which is 8. That means our numbers go from 0 to 7. Okay? Now let's, let's draw the number line. So if you think of the number line here as starting at 0 and going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. These are all the numbers that we can represent in a unsigned system. Okay? Question now is, how do we change this to a sign? Well, if you still have the same number of bits, you can't represent more than eight digits. So what you have to do is you have to make a compromise. You have to say, some of these numbers now must represent negative numbers, and some must represent positive numbers. So we'll draw the number line again, and we'll put zero here again, and now, think about, think about the number 8. What's half of 8? Well, it's 4, right? And think about if these are, if these numbers here are unsigned. That means 4 of the numbers should be, in other words, we're cutting the, the 8 in half, right? We'll represent, we'll have four numbers that are signed and four numbers that are unsigned. So watch this. I'm going to take four of these guys. Ready? And I'm going to start not from one, but I'm going to start from zero because zero doesn't need a negative sign in front of it, right? So therefore, that makes it unsigned. So watch this. Ready? One, two, three, four. There are my four unsigned digits. There they are. One, two, three. One, two, three. So there's four. There's half of them taken by positive numbers. Now let's take the other four. One, two, three, four. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. And that's it. So essentially what we've done is we have shifted the eight digits that are we are able to represent with three bits into these ones. Now the question is, how are we going to represent them? Well, I'll tell you this. From 0 to 3 is going to be exactly the same. So why don't we, why don't we put those ones up first? Okay, so let's go, let's maybe put them here. Here is 0. Okay, that's good. Here is 1. Here is 2. And here is 3. I'll put the numbers on the right hand side. Okay, so, or maybe on the left here. 0, go, go, put a line here. 0, 1, 2, 3. Now, what about the negative numbers? Well, in order to do this, let's start with this one here, the negative 1. Let's write a positive 1. So there's a, there's a the kind of like a procedure to go through the 2's complement procedure. It's actually an inverse function. So 2's complement, it, the procedure is, number 1, step number 1 is you flip the bits. That's an S. Let me fix that. So 
you flip the bits. Step number two, there's only two steps. You add one. Okay? So therefore, let's take the number... Uh, well, let's take the number negative one. Because th these, these are the ones we don't know. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Let's start with negative one. So in, in order to get negative one, first we start with positive one, which is... 0, 0, 1. Then we flip the bits, which becomes 1, 1, 0. So that was, that was the flipping the bit part. And then we add 1. So we'll get, so if, if we go, you know, um, 0, 0, 1, and you add them, not this whole thing, not this part, okay? Just, just these two. Th so going from here to here was the flip. And now we're adding 1, and the answer is 1, 1, 1. Okay? So that means this is equal to negative 1. So let's put it down. Negative 1 is 1, 1, 1. Now let's do negative 2. Okay, so now we'll do this one. So to do negative 2, here, let's move it over a little bit. We start with positive 2, and that's equal to uh, 0, 1, 0. Then we flip the bits, we get 1, 0, 1, and then we add 1. So we're only adding, by the way, we're not adding everything here. We're just adding, um, we're not adding this one. We're just adding these two. Okay? So 1 and 1 is 2. Carry the 1, there's the 1, and there's the 1. That means 1, 1, 0 is negative 2. Negative 2, 1, 1, 0. Let's do the next one. How about negative 3? Okay, so what's positive 3? Positive 3 is equal to... Uh, 0, 1, 1. Now let's, let's flip the bits. 1, 0, 0. And then let's add 1. We're not adding this one. Okay. That says flip. Therefore, it's 1, 0, 1. And that is negative 3. Okay. This one was negative 2. So let's put that in. Negative 3 is 1, 0, 1. Okay? Now, if you look here, we've only got one number left. The problem with that last number, though, is that we don't really have the positive 4. We don't really have the positive 4. But which one of our numbers is left out? We know that it's a negative number. We know that it has to start with a 1. And the only one that's left is that one. OK? So now, there is our, there is our system right here for our signed 3-bit system. That's a signed 3-bit system right there. The numbers from negative 1 to negative 4 are represented here. Notice I want you to recognize something. All the negative numbers start that's a, that's a 1 there. All the negative numbers start with a 1. Okay? So now that we have created this signed system let me move this over a little bit. I think uh, the question I think I had before, what was it, 7? I can't remember what I had. I was trying to do something with a, maybe a 7 minus, I think was it 7 minus 4? But that's okay. Uh, how about we do something different here? Let's just deal with this. There, that's better. Uh, let's try 
dealing with this system here. And let's go, um, how about we say something like uh, 2 minus 4. So the way we would do 2 minus 4, now we know what the answer is, right? In, just in terms of a decimal number, well, that's going to be negative 2. But let's actually try it with the math. This is equal to 2 plus a negative 4. What's a 2? A 2 is 0, 1, 0. What's a negative 4? Well, we come down here and you look, there's our negative 4. It's 1, 0, 0. Now if you add them together, look what I'm going to get. 1, 1, 0. Well, 0, 0, 1, and a 1. Now, what is this in a signed? Remember, this is a signed system. So what is that? Question mark. Well, let's go over here and you'll see that. Lo and behold, it's a negative 2. So it's correct. OK? Let's try a different one. How about if I said um, 3 take away 4? Let's try 3 take away 4. OK? Uh, 3 take away 4. That's going to give me negative 1. That's the same as 3 plus negative 4. 3 is uh, 0, 1, 1. And a 4 is 1, 0, 0 from right there. And now when you add them, you get 1, 1, 1. And what's 1, 1, 1? There it is. It's negative 1 correct. Remember, this is a sign system. So anytime a number starts with a 1, it's a negative number. Okay? How about uh, we do something like um, what if I did something like uh, How about negative 3 plus no how about let's go uh, negative 3 plus or how, how about let's let's uh, plus 1 plus 2. Um, I'm not sure. I'm trying to think of a situation where we can actually ignore the thingy. Give me a sec. Okay, I think I, I got a good example here. Let's go 3 take away 1. Okay, so if I do 3 take away 1, what's a 3? Uh, 3 is 0, 1, 1. And take away 1 is like saying plus negative 1. And what's negative 1? If you remember, negative 1 is 1, 1, 1. So 1, 1, 1. And now we add them. Ready? 1 plus 1 is 2. Carry the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. Put the 1 down. Carry the 1. And now 1 plus 1 is 2. Put the 0 down and carry the 1. And now you get this 1, right? Now wait a minute. I know that 3 take away 1 is the answer is 2. So what is this? That's not a 2. Is that wrong? Guess what? It's not wrong. Why is this not wrong? And I'll tell you why. It's because we have a 3-bit system. And in a 3-bit system, you can only have a maximum of three bits, not four. That means this last bit gets discarded. And if you discard the last bit, the fourth bit, then what are you left with? 
you're left with 0, 1, 0, which is dun, 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 2. Correct. See how that works? That's what I wanted to show you. So um, that's pretty cool. Um, what I'd like you guys to do now is can you create, instead of having a 3-bit system, can you create a 4-bit system? So how many numbers can you possibly have? If you have a 4-bit system, you can have 2 to the power of 4, right, which is 16. So now you can have, what's your highest positive number? You can have half of them positive, half of them negative. So on the number line, you're going to go from 0 to 8 positive numbers starting from 0. Eight, why 8? Because 8 is half of 16. So you're going to go all the way up to 7. So there's 8 positive numbers. And then 8 negative numbers, you're going to go all the way to negative 8. Okay? I'll, I'll leave that uh, for you for an exercise in terms of how to create those. Basically, you know, just to give you a hint, right? What you're going to do is you're going to create all of these guys first. And then you're going to do the two's complement for all of those, except zero. Okay? I can just tell you right now, I can tell you right off the bat what two of the numbers are going to be. Zero doesn't change. Okay, so I mean, if we were to, if we were to do zero, look what happens to zero if we do the two's complement of it. Ready? Zero, flip the bits, and add one. What do we get? One plus one is two. Carry the one. One plus one is two. Carry the one. One plus one is two carry the 1 and the 1 comes down but if it's only a 3-bit system now in this one was a 3-bit system but if it was a 4-bit system okay fine here's a 4-bit system 1 plus 1 is 2 there it is carry the 1 and the 1 goes down so it doesn't matter because if it's a 4-bit system then you only take the first 4 bits and the last one's discarded that means the negative version of zero, whatever that means, you can never really have negative zero, but whatever that means, it's the same. It's equal to zero. So zero maps to itself, which is perfect. You don't want to have two different zeros. Okay? But to map one to seven negative, you just take it, whatever it is. So let's say, for example, if we had uh, Let's say, let's say, for example, if we took 7, right? 1, 1, 1. Flip the bits, 0, 0, 0, and add 1. And so you'd get, um, oh, no, 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 no. There's a 0 here. Phew, I forgot. I was like, wait, how can a 7 start with a 1? Because if it starts with a 1, it has to be negative. Z the 7 in a 4-bit system would be 0, 1, 1, 1. You flip the bits, okay? But this one now becomes a 1, sorry. So you flip the bits and add 1. So the answer is there. That is equal to negative 7. However, um, what's this one? Remember, there's a, there's a kind of a rule for the biggest negative number, and the answer is the biggest negative number starts with a 1 and then is all zeros. So that is equal to negative 8 right there. That's negative 7. They both start with a 1. Okay? And essentially, you would do the same for all the other ones as well. And then you'd have your 4-bit uh, system. Okay? 
Okay, so here we have on the left-hand side, uh, we've got a four-bit system, and I've put all the positive numbers down. And one thing to note that this is kind of like something you can always remember is we've got negative 7 here and negative 8 is that the negative 1 is always going to be 1, 1, 1, 1. So negative 1 is always going to be all 1s no matter how, what, how many bits you have in the system. The other thing you should know is that the biggest negative number, which in this case is negative 8, is going to be 1 followed by all zeros. Now all we need to do is figure out what the 2 to 7 is. Now we've already done, I think we did the 7, or maybe I erased that. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was here, but I ended up erasing it. I had, um, there's positive 7, and then flip the bits and add 1, and so there is negative 7. So 1001, zero, zero, 1001. Zero, zero, one. And now uh, let's do 6. So 6 is from here, we've got 60110. Zero, one, zero. So that's positive 6. We flip the bits and then we add 1. And 1 plus 1 is 0. Carry the 1. 101. Zero, one. And so therefore, 6 is 1010, 1010, that's negative 6. Let's do 5. So 5 is 0101, uh, zero, one, zero, that's a 5. Flip the bits, 1010, zero, zero. add 1, you get 1101, one, one. that's negative 5. So negative 5 is, oops. Uh, one zero one one now let's do negative four uh, negative four is four zero one zero zero and flip the bits one zero one one add one carry the one uh, carry the one and therefore, 4 is 1100. 1100. So that's negative 4. And then um, negative 3 is positive 3. Right? This one was negative 4. And now positive, uh, sorry, negative 3 would be flip the bits, add 1. That's 1, 0. 1, 1. So we've got 1, 1, 0, 1. And finally, last but not least, uh, 2 was 0, 0, 1, 0. That's positive 2. Flip the bits. Uh, 1, 1, 0, 1. Add 1. And we're going to get 2 carry the 1, and then 1, 1. And so therefore, it's 1, 1, 1, 0. And so there is our 4-bit uh, 2's complement. So that's a 4-bit that's a sign system. OK? And it goes from negative 8 all the way to positive 7. Okay? That gives us 16 digits. 16 numbers. All right? So half of them are negative and half of them are positive. I guess you consider zero to be part of the uh, positive numbers. Okay? Well, I hope you uh, 
enjoyed this video by the way before we go move on I just want to specify now we can do we can do more addition and subtraction at this point we can do just one more let's say for example if we if I was to do something like we have to be careful that our answer lies within our four bit system right but let's just say I went um, uh, something like six take away four so 6 take away 4 is like saying 6 plus negative 4 and that's going to we know that's going to give us a 2 so now let's go 6 which is 0 uh, 1 1 0 right 4 plus 2 and then we need the negative 4 so now I'll go and find that from here and our negative 4 is 1 1 0 0 one one zero zero and if I add them up zero plus zero is zero one plus zero is one one plus one is two carry the one and then uh, one plus one is two write the zero carry the one and there goes the one but since we have a four bit system we only take the four bits and we discard the fifth bit and 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0 is in fact a 2. And so it's correct. Okay? Well, like I said, hope you enjoyed this uh, lesson today on binary numbers. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.